Thank you, Mr. President, and thank you, Senator Murphy, for an excellent um, answer to your question, when should we raise taxes? Let me add a few. We should raise our taxes when everybody knows that the sewer pipes flowing under <laughs> their streets are not failing. When people can flush their toilets and be rest assured that the sewage goes somewhere else and not into their basements. When people can, clean, can rely on clean drinking water, something we take for granted here in Minnesota. When they can drive to work in a reasonable amount of time, knowing that they're not going to break an axle because they hit a pothole. I could go on and on, but I think you get the point. Uh, last night, I met with a group of teachers from Hopkins, not exactly inner city, a very, very good public school system. And I, I frankly asked them why they're staying with teaching. Next year, the Hopkins public school system will be requiring 38 students in their middle school classes and their high school classes. They told me about students who are sitting on the floor in Hopkins. They told me about students who are sitting in the hall and taking turns coming into the classroom in Hopkins. This is a suburb in Hopkins. This is in my district, District 44. I had several special ed teachers there. They talked about having groups of five special ed kids integrated into a classroom with 38 and one special ed teacher who's running between classrooms because they don't have enough paras. This is in Hopkins. I open up my YZ Public Schools homepage. YZ Schools project a $9.2 million shortfall. <laughs> you know, I am new to the Senate. All day I've sat here, and all I'm hearing is we are in a time of scarcity. We don't have enough. We don't have enough. Yet on the same, on the other hand, I hear we have money coming from the feds. I find it incredibly ironic that I have heard my colleagues sitting behind me talk all day about all the money coming from the feds. And I think that, oh, that's pretty rich from a um, group of people who seem to not like taxes. I don't know where the money from the feds is coming from. If it's free money, we hear that the feds can print money, but in fact, our children are going to be paying off that debt. There is no such money as free, there's no such thing as free money, and I can't believe that me, a super progressive, left-wing crazy Democrat, has to say that out loud. There is no such thing as free money. And if we're relying on the feds, the feds, to save our schools, and to house our homeless, and to feed our hungry, I'm laughing, I find that rich. So let's live into our abundance. Let's live in a state where we have enough money to pay for kids to not have to sit on the floor when they go to class in Hopkins. Let's pay for a state, let's pay money and taxes so that my grandkids at the Wyzetta Public Schools can go to pre-K. They can't get in, there's not enough room. Even paying tuition, let's live in a state where we are as really willing to put up the money to be proud of what we say we're proud of. I'm from Wisconsin. My, for the last 36 years, I've heard about how great Minnesota is, but we're not willing to pay for what we value. I am not willing to represent a school district that has 38 kids in a middle school class. There's no way I'd step foot in that classroom, and I've been teaching for 26 years. <sighs> We have to live into our abundance. I am tired of hearing we don't have enough. We have enough. My husband and I are in the top 1%. Did I, man it? Did I mention already that I'm a job creator? I am willing to pay more taxes so that my grandkids can go to preschool. I am willing to pay more taxes so that I don't have people camped out in tents along 94 and on my way home to YZ. I am willing to pay more taxes so that my grandkids can go to college. We have enough. This is Minnesota and quit. I am tired of people saying it without putting their money up. We all voted for family tax, working family tax credit, but nobody, or only 31 of us voted to fund it. That is, baloney. 